My name is Emma Rogers, and I go to Florida High, and I'm going into sixth grade. My name is Nellie Kripe. I go to Montford Middle School, and I'm going into seventh grade. My name is Paige Carey, and I go to the School of Arts and Sciences, and I'm going into the sixth grade. My name is Emma Bryson, and I go to Holy Comforter, and I'm going into the eighth grade. My name is Marissa Ponder, and I'm going to Fairview Middle School for sixth grade. What was your favorite activity of SciGirls? I liked going to the animal shelter, but I also liked Wakala, so it's yeah. kind of both in there. Me personally, I liked touring around the different places we were able to go, like coming here to WFSU and learning more about engineering over at the waterworks stuff. I liked doing hands-on things. I liked going to the animal shelter and um, actually seeing a real surgery. I want to be Ooh. a surgeon, <sighs> so it's... On animals? Like, it's different actually seeing that in real life instead of seeing it on TV and seeing it, like, on the Internet and stuff. Like, I didn't want to watch an animal get hurt really bad, but I know that when you are actually spaying a dog, it helps them because they don't go through unwanted pain if they accidentally get pregnant. I really enjoyed, like... We kind of all connected on the rides way, oh like, gosh. two on the way back <laughs> from these places. Like, like one point, all of us fell asleep in the back seat, and it was really funny. Yeah. And um, we would all start laughing at random times. It was really fun. We, My van, we played a game that's called Are You Friendly? Friendly or Not. Yeah, <laughs> and you would wave at random cars. Yeah. And if they waved back, they were friendly. And, and I constantly tested the van behind me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was really funny is that sometimes people would ask really personal questions, and then it would go from personal to, like, super personal. <laughs> And um, Isabella <laughs> made a really good point. Like, by the end of camp, we're going to know each other so well, we could be like sisters. <laughs> mm-hmm. I definitely didn't think it was going to be so, like, that I would be so comfortable and used to with, like, all the girls here. I didn't think I would get to know them as well as I have. And I thought that we were just going to be sitting in a classroom learning about science, maybe getting to do an experiment or two, but I didn't know that we were going to places. I didn't know that we were going to do so much hands-on stuff. It's been way better than I wanted it. I thought that it was going to be like I wasn't going to make any friends and that it was going to be like just us kind of like hanging around at the mag lab doing experiments. But it's been so different. We've been going to places that are two hours away and then places that are out of town and it's been really fun. Yeah, we go on like at least one trip every day somewhere. You should sign up for Sci Girls because it's awesome and you get to do so much cool stuff. It's this not just isn't awesome. school. This is so much different than school because you're actually getting out and doing things that they can't do in schools because you can't really take all of these kids to one place every day. Every day is like a field trip. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we went to an inside amusement park. Yeah. Why wouldn't you want to do that? We went (laughs) swimming at Wakala Springs, and we're going swimming in Blue Blue Springs Springs tomorrow. But, I mean, like, you learn stuff that, like, you didn't think that they would bother to tell you at science camp. Like, I learned yesterday that cinnamon sticks come from the bark of a tree. You didn't know. Who knew? (laughs) Me either. (laughs) Who got you so interested in science? Ooh. My dad. <laughs> me. Well, I was just always, like, it always interested me how you could, like, make this whole brand new discovery that could, like, change everything if it worked well. And then I just loved science. What triggered me was when I went to the Mag Lab for my first time when I was little with my dad, I saw so much cool stuff and then I could see that you can make something happen that was super cool. I just have been interested in science ever since. My trigger was my mom. She always wanted me to get into something that would make me learn things but something that I could be interested in. We tried sports, which I still do now, but it wasn't something that I could learn from and we tried all sorts of stuff and finally as a kid I loved science because you could make things, you could turn things into something else, you could play with things. I always thought it was just a giant (laughs) amusement park almost in my mind. Another thing that triggered my love for science is I like helping people and so I always wanted to be a doctor and doctors do a lot of science too. 
for me. So. Like, at first, before I learned anything about science, I thought it was just blowing up a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> but um, now Couple. that I've learned a little bit more, it's not just blowing up a whole bunch of stuff. It's learning why and how it blew up. <laughs> and it's just way more than I ever thought it would be. In school, I had to do a biography on someone, and I chose Sally Ride. I was like, okay, yeah, I'm just going to do her because it's school project. But I learned, like, some really fun stuff while looking all this stuff about her. Like, she started the Earth Cam, which, like, I could, I could get now and look at videos of the Earth right now. And I also learned that the tongue is the strongest muscle in the body. <laughs> it's always also interested me in science is every time you learn something new, your brain structure completely changes. One of my questions was, what kind of things do you do on the Internet, going with science or with other things? I like this website, and it's called Little Alchemy. And you can, Ooh, like, like, create that. different things using the, like, four main elements. And you eventually build up and build up to get, like, all the things you want to build. And you can just create, like, amazing things. Mm -hmm. Me too. And you can create, like, bacteria and stuff and... Once you created the bacteria, you can create humans and all. And it's, wow. pre it's pretty cool. YouTube. I go on <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> to be completely honest, I go on YouTube, but it's really weird because they have the link. Like when you're watching a video, they have the links that pop up afterwards. And there are some interesting things that popped up. Like I found a documentary on a giant squid just from looking up the word squid. <laughs> what did you think was going to come up? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> if YouTube were talking about this is anything. True. 100% true. My role models are my mom and then all my teachers. They always support me. And my mom, she always tries to do her best to do what's good for me, you know. My role model is my mom and my grandmother because my mom is a um, school teacher that works with special needs kids, but my mom is officially gone back to school to get her PhD, and she works really hard, and it's really nice to see someone that works hard but still has time to show you things and, play, I guess, play with you and hang out with you and knowing that she still loves you. My mom, she's a family practitioner, and she will not stop. She's a nonstop woman. She will not stop working at anything. She is not satisfied until... She has proven her point to her patients about whether something is right or wrong, whether their 12-year-old should get a shot that, like, <laughs> makes them not have brain disease or cancer or whatever when they, like, turn 18. Probably my mom. She's not in a science career, but she is an attorney, and she's constantly working on cases that need to be solved, and she brings some work home with her, but she also makes time for family, which is very important. Sometimes, if you don't have that kind of mom to look up to, sometimes you could find other ways to look up to things, like a grandmother or a dad. And if you don't have anything, um, like some kids, they don't have good parents, so they're in foster homes. You could learn from your foster parents, definitely, because most of the time foster parents are pretty nice and they're smart too. You could always look up to your teachers because I know they will always support you in schoolwork and science careers. You could look up to someone who inspires you. You could say, I want to be just like that person. And you could just work hard all your life to get there. And even a friend, you, your friend could be your role model. I'm Emma Rogers, and I go to Florida High, and I'm going into sixth grade. I'm Nellie Kripp. I go to Montford Middle School. I'm going into seventh grade, and I'm a proud side girl. My name is Paige Carey, and I go to the School of Arts and Sciences, and I'm going into the sixth grade, and I'm a side girl. My name is Emma Bryson, and I go to Holy Comforter, and I'm going into eighth grade, and I am proud to be a side girl right now. I'm Marissa Ponder, and I'm going to Fairview Middle School, and I'm going into the sixth grade, and this has been your Proud Psy Girls. No, no, no. That was awesome. That was so fun. That was so Because we're all proud Psy Girls, and I mean, maybe telling someone else about it could be easier than telling the whole world about it, but we're all proud to be Psy Girls. 
I'm Megan Akavar Thapu, and I'm going to Childs High School, and I'm going to ninth grade. I am Amelia Hitz, and I go to Cobb Middle School, and I'm going into eighth grade. I'm Aria Douglas. I go to McClay School, and I'm going to eighth grade. I'm Allison Grove. I go to Deer Lake Middle School, and I'm going into eighth grade. I'm Nana Robertson. I'm going to go to Leon High School, and I'm going into ninth grade. A question that I had was, how do you think science has influenced you as a person, as opposed to like TV shows, your parents, or anything else like that? I think it's taught me a lot about how our world is progressing, uh, because we have so many developments in science and things that are going on, how we're solving issues and improving the lives of people around the world. Uh, diseases, catastrophe, economics, problems in working conditions, and just knowing more about the world because it's really, really big and kind of scary, so it helps to learn things and be able to understand our world. Yeah, uh, science is, like, everywhere. I mean, not only for, like, progressive stuff, like, for entertainment, uh, getting, like, camera systems, technology, and, like, science is, like, everywhere. Definitely. I think science should be more incorporated into, like, a classroom setting and hands-on and, like, exploring different fields of science. I think that they should do more because it's very, like, standard textbook. And there should be more of, like, real-world science and not just memorizing definitions about rocks. Because <laughs> a lot of times it could be boring and it's like, I don't want to do science if it's boring. A lot of people feel that that's what science is when a lot of times it's not exactly how it's taught. Yeah, and sometimes the classroom setting, some people can be shy, and if they have a question about something, it's not like they want to raise their hand and draw attention to them. So if science was more one-on-one, -on -one, so people could express their opinion better. I think that if the classroom and the science gets less hands-on and less interactive, people are going to stop like pursuing science as a career or studying it. I agree. I think a lot of science in the classroom is memorizing lists and facts, and that's not very interesting to some kids. I think if they explored more fields, like you never hear about Disney Imagineers in your classroom setting, and if it would be super interesting and something someone would want to do one day, they're never going to hear about it unless they go to a camp like this. Or you could do like clubs. Like at my school, we have a forensics club for people who like forensics because we don't teach it in like middle school or elementary. But if somebody likes it, they can go to that club after school and learn more about it and do experiments. How do you think science is progressing in the modern day world? Is it moving fast and sloppily or much too slow? I think it's moving fast. We have new stuff come out like about every day about science. It's like even upgrades on your phone or something. It's like science still because the finger passcode thing so having to type in your passcode you put your finger there that's science behind it there's science behind everything now and i feel a lot more now when people have something they want to know they turn to science they feel like they can trust science yeah uh, technology has really really progressed in the last couple decades and it's amazing how we've gone from like a bunch of wires to like on your phone where you can do anything. Yeah, like today we did a virtual reality thing. That's science and it's really cool because we didn't have that like a long time ago when I was a lot younger. Now it's a huge thing. You can buy it. Yeah, it's science. amazing. Mm -hmm. So you put on these goggly things, but like you're in a box and then they hand you this little remote and the remote you press down like the trigger and you can paint stuff but it's in 3d you can like walk through what you paint it was so cool it was just amazing yeah it was really immersive when you put on the goggles it's like you can't see like anything like if you were to wave your hand in front of your face you couldn't see your hand and it was like you were standing in a box like like a room and then you could write stuff in the air pretty much yeah it's, kind of, it's hard to describe like you have to see it what job should more women be in that's my question basically anything anything that anyone is interested in I don't think there's like a specific field that women should only go in or should only try I think that they can go in anything 
I think there's a lot of expectation of what women are going to go into in our society and what men typically go into. And I think that um, people shouldn't be afraid to go past those expectations and go into what they want instead of what society wants them to go into. I'd like to add on to that. Like my mom, she's the computer programmer and stuff, and she's always telling me that there's a lot less women in coding and computer science is like a really big field and more girls should like go into that and it's really really interesting. My dad is part of finance and so there's not a lot of women in finance it's mostly just men. I think that if we added in different genders and races and experience we'd get a lot more diversity and a lot more ideas of how we should run the world. Yeah, like social media has like really shaped our generation. What social media has like taught us is that girls are more like fragile. They're more like you have to be pretty and like ladylike and all this stuff. And like men have to be more masculine and strong and stuff. When basically you can be anything you want and do anything. The faces of a lot of fields or jobs are mostly men. So it's sort of like showing like young girls like men are supposed to be in these jobs. Like I can't be in this job even if I want to, it's only for men, but that's not true. Men are seen as stronger, and because that is what society has projected out, and but really girls are just as strong, girls are just as smart, girls are just as good. Yeah, I think thoughts on that boys are better than girls, I think that they've changed too because I know that in the past people would never expect a girl to go into a field of science or a field of math. I definitely think that We've progressed, and now girls are doing whatever they want to. Yeah, if you look back then, I wouldn't say, like, back back then, but girls were mostly, like, secretaries or something, and now we're, like, CEOs, which I think is awesome. My question is, how do you think having science in the lives of young people, girls specifically, will provide beneficial for their futures? Our society sees girls as not the providers, but as the receivers. And I think science is going to change that because we have good jobs in science and we're (coughs) learning a lot. We learn through experiences in science and we get to make groundbreaking discoveries and do a lot more than we girls used to. What do you think has been the greatest discovery of our day? I mean, it's so hard because there's so many different things that have been discovered. I mean, I think it's whatever appeals to you. Yeah, I think it's how much the invention has impacted you. I just wanted everyone's input on this. Are there any other ways that more people could get enthusiastic about science? Like, I know uh, PBS does a lot of kids' TV shows, and that's what really, really sparked my love for science. But do you think there's anything else? Like we said in the beginning, school doesn't do a great job of showing what a job in science would be, really. If they could do more of showing how science is, if you got a job in science instead of just facts about random stuff. Yeah, and I definitely think camps like this camp that we're attending, the Sci Girls camps, they show girls that, like, science isn't just about things like that. It's, like, so much more, like, so many different fields that you can learn about. My name is Megana Kavarthapu. I'm going to child high school, and I'm going to ninth grade. And I think any girl should join it, because if they love science or they want to learn more about science, or even if you're, like, not that interested into science, it's still a great fun camp that, like, anyone can enjoy. My name is Amelia Hitz. I go to Cobb Middle School, and I'm going into eighth grade. And I think that Saw Girls... If anybody's interested, that's a girl, should definitely get involved because it's a great experience and it's also educational, but it's still super fun and you get to go and experience lots of stuff. My name is Aria Douglas. I go to McClay School. I'm going to eighth grade. And I think Sci Girls has helped me meet other people my age that are girls that love science because at my school, some people that are like girls in science just like yeah I'm not gonna ever use this ever but like people here are like I want to pursue a career in it and they like know what they want to do mostly and it has to do with science so that's it's great. My name is Allison Grove I go to Deer Lake Middle School I'm going into the eighth grade and I like Sci Girls because it's very empowering 
and uh, it helps you realize how much you can make a difference in the science world. And so I would definitely recommend it to anyone who's interested in that particular field. My name is Mana Robertson, and I'm going to Leon High School, and I'm going into ninth grade. And I think SciGirls is a really great program because maybe your friends or something might think science is just for, like, nerds or people who, like, like studying a lot. But I think this camp isn't just about, like, studying and taking notes. It's not about that. You, like, get to experience things and have a great time with people who love science as much as you do. Uh, spectacular. Amazing. Enlightening. Empowering. Enjoyable. Hello, Tallahassee. I'm Naomi. And I'm Serby. And, and this, this is, is the Sci Girls, Girls Report. Report. Science is a science theme camp, lots of fun and informative field trips. We wouldn't have been able to do most of these activities if we didn't attend this camp. Our first segment is at the Wonderworks in Panama City, Florida. The first thing you notice when you see Wonderworks is that it's upside down. Literally upside down. Inside, there are many simulators and rides that are science-based. One of the first things we see is the, in the video is the 360 bike. It's a two-person bike where the more you pedal, the more you flip. The bike is powered by inertia and gravitational pull. Oh, I'm Isabella. I'm here with Aida. She's in SciGirls 1. She's going to tell us about her experiences in SciGirls. Uh, what has been the most interesting part of camp for you? The most interesting part of camp was when we went to FCIM, which stands for Florida Center for Interactive Media. We got to play with virtual, virtual reality headsets, and we got to have like um, Google Cardboard and then we got to 3D draw, but on a computer. Cool. Um, uh, so what were some of the things that you really enjoyed there? Um, the thing I really enjoyed there was the virtual reality headset because I have never, I've seen one before, but I've never gotten to play with it. Um, so we got to draw in it and you could draw like a snowman. So for instance, I had a background and there was a snowman and he was built already. So you could draw like the top hat and the buttons and you could walk through the snowman, but it was really fun. Okay. So did it feel weird or, um, it, yeah? <laughs> well, it really felt weird because you couldn't see anyone all you could hear was sounds, and peop you couldn't see where there were. So you'd like turn in one corner, and they'd be like, no, we're over here. And then you'd walk places. And one of the girls accidentally walked into a chair and hit the chair with the remote. 
<laughs> and another one just <laughs> wandered around and um yeah so it was really weird okay thanks Aida for joining us for more information about Sci Girls go to WFSU.org I'm Isabella back to you in the studio thank you moving on to our next segment a water theme day we started out water testing then moved to WFSU where we played a very fun and interesting engineering game called water moves. We had to use different materials to move water from a kiddie pool to our team's buckets without crossing the boundary. Many random rules came up after we broke them, so there were many challenges. You know I got that, right? Welcome everybody, my name is Caitlin. I'm here with Sandhya, she's in Sci Girls 1. Sandhya is going to tell us about this interesting camp. So Sandhya, what makes this camp so interesting? Well, Sci Girls is a very interesting camp that lets girls who are interested in science careers um, explore different fields of science and many different experiences and investigations. Alright, so what areas of science do you like? Um, I'm interested in medicine because medicine is like life and death and you can help someone survive if you can be in that field and medicine's always changing so I would like to be part of the, the change of people. So how is this rec camp related to medicine? Well in this camp we did a lot of medical examinations and questions one of which was we spayed a dog which was really good exposure and we also saw how some medicines are made in BASF. Okay, so what is BASF and what did you do with them? Well, BASF is a chemical plant and they are, their motto is we create chemistry. They make lots of different um, minerals and stuff like that. We went to one of their mining places where we got a mine and we saw lots of cool things. We saw bones and teeth and all kinds of stuff. It was really cool experience. So you said they had to mine things? So do they have to do anything to restore the land, or do they leave it? Yes, like um, when they mine the ground, they have to keep it in the, p the position it was before they mine, and sometimes they leave it better, which is really cool because the environment is not changed because of what they made. For okay, thanks. Thanks, Sandhya, for joining us. For more information about SciGirls, go to WFSU.org. I'm Caitlin, back to you in the studio. Thank you. We also went out to Tall Timbers Research Station, where we used equipment to find birds wearing special transmitter devices. We got to hold and touch animals like the king snake and endangered gopher tortoise. The tortoise peed on me. Welcome to nature. Afterwards, we headed back to the mag lab, where a chemist, chemist taught us about oil spills. We did a hands-on activity where we used Dawn dish soap, milk, and food coloring to make a cool reaction. Nobody. <laughs> so not as much of a beep, right? And then you hear it again? Yeah, yeah right? So that's how you know that we're going the right way. Just turn it till that turns to a nut. Oh, there is one, yeah. Three, nine, okay. Now listen again, and the beep's gonna change a little bit, but it helps you zero in on it. Do you hear it still? Put it in front of us, put that way. A little quieter, try this way. A little quieter, go, on, go straight forward. Mike stress it out if we all touch it, but 
kiss with her to get pictures. That's so cute. Aww. Aww. It's shivering. It's scary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's probably me shaking. Smile really quickly. Is it a baby? No, it's a full-grown adult. It's a male. Very territorial. Aww. Oh, wow. A native species, two to three feet long, and a nine species that live in the right hills. Who knows what this one is? I didn't talk about this one, but I wrote this. This salamander. Oh, do you have a rainbow? Bingo. Oh. So, do you guys think those guys live on tall timber as tiger salamanders? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Don't scale, see how it's rougher. See how it feels oh, rougher. It's kind of eyeballing. Can we hold that one? We're not allowed to It's kind of eyeballing the corn yeah, snake. Really weird. I mean, it's really yes. so okay, just going to do it. Thank you. I just got the best idea in the world. Yeah, I did that like twice and it was. Yours is starting to mix together. That happened real quick. That was really cool. That was really cool. That was really cool. Okay. That was really cool. That was really cool. <laughs> really cool. Really cool. <laughs> really cool. <laughs> Keep your cute with him. Keep your cute. Hey, that was not you look really cool. You look so cool. Sorry. 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 Oh, yours looks really cool. Well, that's it for the Sci Girls Report. This camp was amazing. Yeah, I'm totally coming back next year. Sci Girls, we're, we're better, better than, than Wooly Blue Curls. curls. Kasai. And I'm Helen. And, and you're, you're watching, watching the Sci Girls, Girls Report. During these two weeks, we have had opportunities to experience hands-on learning, step out of our comfort zone, and have fun. Last Wednesday, we went rock climbing, and we got to meet some furry, feathery friends from TMH Therapy Program. Did you have a rocking good time? Yes. My favorite part was reaching the top and touching the baby face. You can see me doing that in the video. My name is Kenzie. I'm here with Elise Smith. She's a Sci Girl. She's going to tell us what the Sci Girls Summer Camp is all about. So, what was your favorite camp activity in Sci Girls? This week, my favorite Sci Girls activity was going to Blue Springs. 
Why was Blue Springs your favorite activity? Because I was able to get up close and personal with a lot of different species of aquatic um, organisms like spotted gar. I, able, I was able to find a bass, several mullet. I saw a lot of minnows. What specifically have you learned in Psychos? I have learned a lot. A lot of lessons about camaraderie and teamwork. I've also learned a lot about engineering, structural design. Have you been part of Psychos before? Yes, I have. When I was, last year, when I was 12, I was part of Sly Girls 1. What, um, when you were older, what would you like to do? I would like to be a marine biologist. What do marine biologists do? Marine biologists work with a lot of marine anim animals. You know, they study them, research their social um, relationships, and stuff like that. Thanks, Elise, for joining us. For more information about Psychos, go to WFSU.org. I'm Kenzie, back to you in the studio. Thank you. On day two, we focused on engineering and got to build a chaos tower, which is a roller coaster for a marble. The object of the chaos tower was to get the marble through the course and have it be able to repeat the course. Did you have a rolling good time? I don't know about you, but I was rolling with laughter by the end. Then, a real-life Disney Imagineer visited us. M.K. Haley taught us about what she does, and it was magical. We even got to do the spaghetti marshmallow challenge. We had to get a marshmallow to the top of a tower made out of spaghetti, tape, and string. So many variables. So many variables. I've done this from before, like, supplies. Cool. So you know what you're doing. So your team is lucky. All right, do you girls feel lucky? Yeah? Is it easier than we thought? Harder than we thought? Uh, much harder than we thought. Really? It's about my third time doing it. It's still hard. Yeah. Trampoline scary? A little bit. It makes a sound.
two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Hi, my name is Marley Gatanis. I'm here with Julia Pagan. She's in Sight Girls. She's going to tell us about her trip to the Tallahassee Museum. Hi, Julia. So what exactly did you do there? Uh, we went on a zip line course above the museum. Oh, that's super cool. Mm -hmm. So I understand that it's really high up. How did you guys get up there? Well, we did a safety like training, you could call it, and then we went up this pretty tall ladder up to a platform where we hooked up, we had two clips, and we hooked onto this, what we call the safety line, so we didn't fall off, and if we did, we got caught. <laughs> what was your favorite part? Probably when we went on the zip lines. We went on two of them, and that was really fun because it felt like you were just like free falling, I guess you could say, soaring through like a bird kind of thing. That's so cool. Well, thanks, Julia, for joining us. For more information about Sci Girls, go to WFSU.org. I'm Marley Gatanis. Back to you in the studio. Thank you. On day four, we went to the Novi Animal Hospital, and we learned about all of the jobs done by the employees and the services they provide. We also went to Tree to Tree Adventures at the Tallahassee Museum. And let me just say, I had a tremendous time. They're not going to show up in this form. This is what they look like when they've gotten so bad already that it's a little out of control, especially those tapeworms. It's being equal to or greater than 26. And it is. There we go. So, marboflotocin and trimethylpremsulfa are both good drugs to use. Good find to have, but I don't really want to. I'm thinking it's coxide, though, because coxide tends to grow on. Um, Alright, so next part is anesthesia and surgery. Yeah, like all this would be, you would see more of them. This has been the Sci Girls Report 2016. I would recommend this camp to any girl who has interest in science. We had such a fun time. Sci Girls 2 2016, we're out. Sci Girls 2016, we out.